that era in New York was, I mean, we moved to New York when, and when other people were fleeing, which was great for us economically because we could you know, find a cheap place to live and work. And the city was dangerous, and that's partly why people were fleeing. But it was also very exciting. A lot was happening. You know, the Ramones were happening. You know, CBGBs. Um, you know, there was, you know, hip hop was emerging. Graffiti was happening. All these, you know, for for an artist to come there. I mean, if I was a banker coming there, it would probably be a pain in the ass. And all of it was like uh, more of this horrible stuff. But for an artist to come there, you know, I was I was receptive to it. The style of art at the time in 73 was minimalism and conceptual art. That wasn't my thing. My thing was still, I was making basically modernist sculpture. But the stuff that was happening was minimalism. Dan Flavin and the great artists of the, of the 70s in New York. Carl Andre with, you know, plaques of metal lying on the floor. So I was happy to see some expression on the trains. I think that drew me. As a visual experience, I found it a very exciting one. The other thing that drew me was that these were, you know, young kids. These were adolescents. They were angry, perhaps. They were rebellious. And that drew me, you know, because I could, I could remember. I wasn't that far. I was in my sort of late 30s. I, I was remembering my own youth and my own rebellion. And so I was drawn to this rebellion. That took me out on the train, on the trestles, to take these pictures. I was a, a middle-aged white man, and they were teenagers of all different races and, and cultures. So they stayed away from me. I finally met one of them because he was taking pictures on the line, too. And I guess he finally thought that, well, if this guy's a cop and he's got me taking pictures, you know, I might as well go up and find out who he is. So he came up and he started talking. And uh, then I, through him, I got to know a whole bunch of people. And when I had my show in 1980, hundreds came and I got to know everybody. And I became a part of the culture because I had a studio where I was generous about letting people come and looking at the pictures. I gave pictures to any writer that had, whose, whose artwork it was, of course. And in exchange, I got little drawings in return, things like that, which were lovely. And I also got information. So I would be called upon, like on my answering machine, and you know, when I woke up in the morning, telling me that they did a piece on such and such a line. I was getting intel, which was invaluable as this as this went along. In more than one sense, it's like performance art. I think because you only get one chance to do it. You can be in, like an artist in their studio can tear up it, throw it away, if it didn't come out. But if you're doing a piece on the train. You really only have time to do it, and that's it. So in that sense, it's like performance art, as well as the ephemeral nature of it, and that it only really exists now in, in photos. I think because they're kids, they were looking at comic books. I know Scene was a, was a master of, of expropriation. S-E-E-N, Richie Mirando, and he actually lives in Paris part-time now, but he's from the Bronx. A lot of his work incorporated things from the advertising world, little sort of cartoon-like animated figures, things that you see in, in ads, and comic books, of course. And one of the most interesting in this period when I was taking pictures were the comics of Vaughn Baudet, who was an underground artist from San Francisco. His characters were these amazing sort of looking lizard figures that were, you know, dressed cool like hip kids and, and spoke in a kind of Brooklyn street slang. And the, I think the kids identified, well, obviously they identified with those greatly and put them on the cars as representing themselves and their attitudes. I really believe that the peak of, of invention in a kind of calligraphy was wild style, which are the interconnecting letters and overlapping which really is an invention of these kids. A couple of generations it took to put it together you know, a generation being maybe two years apart, the optimum age being like 16 to 18, because once you're 18, then you're, you're subject to greater penalties. They ended up inventing a, a wonderful calligraphy style, which is wild style. I think font designers study them. It linked up right around 1980 with the club scene. There are two people who had a lot to do with it. One was Fab Five Freddy, who in 1979 had linked up with Lee Quinones. 
he saw the possible connections and the value of this. And I think, you know, he ended up being, you know, the, M the OMTV Raps guy. And he saw Lee Quinones' amazing work in, on handball courts in Lower Manhattan and started collaborating with him. He was definitely on the scene and would have been a person, he was older also, and would have been in the club scene. The blackouts and hip hop is a, a relationship which is, is very strong because the looting which took place meant that a lot of kids could loot the equipment that they needed. I've heard from, you know, old school hip hop guys that that, that was when hip hop really began in 1977 during the blackout. That was when this one guy said, that was when we knew the power that we had. And then the next thing that, that happened around that time was breakdancing, which Martha and I had a hand in, in revealing to the world the existence of breakdancers. Because it was, a, it was a form which nobody, which a lot of people who lived in the outer boroughs had seen, but nobody ever decided that it would be a good thing to, to document. And it wasn't until we came along and Martha stumbled upon them. She told me about it and I had a, I had a performance thing that I was doing downtown and I wanted to liven it up, so I, I asked my graffiti artist friends about breakdancing, if they'd ever heard of it. And they said, oh, we know the best crew in the city. And they brought me Frosty Freeze and, and Crazy Legs to show me what it was. And I invited them to be part of this performance, which got into the Village Voice, which happened only as far as the dress rehearsal, because it got broken up by gang activity. But word got out, and that sort of began breakdancers being involved in the club scene. Because already there were DJs and, and rappers being involved in the club scene. And that's, this brought in b-boys, because the b-boys that I knew were, were the graffiti artists too, and it brought everybody into that scene. I think the main aspect of trains is the mobility throughout the city on this network of, of rails. The train is very important, and I think it influenced the style I don't think Wild Style would have developed on a wall. I think in part it developed on a train because of the motion, the fact that it moves. Because the pieces, there's directional arrows in it which tell you where it's going. That grew out of the fact that this thing moves. That influenced the, the form that it took. You're reading, you're definitely reading. It's lettering, it's, it's names, it's statements. Graffiti was appealing to everybody. It was appealing to every kid, whether you grew up on Park Avenue or, or in the ghetto. For a while there, it was definitely a social leveler. You know, and it, and it was a cross-section of everybody. All races, all classes, everybody participated in graffiti. So it's hard to say that graffiti is, is this artwork of the marginalized. But it works as a, as a kind of idea. And the idea was, was infectious to people around the world that they saw it and they saw, they said, you know, those, are, those kids look like me, we can do that. The whole branding thing, they were quite conscious of that. I think it probably is not an accident that this happened in New York City, which is the media center and the center of the advertising industry. I think people are already hip to that and these kids were hip to that. And they were, a lot of them were in schools that were leading them to the, you know, graphic design to the ad industry. I was told, this is not art, this is vandalism. And you're promoting it. This is not good what you're doing. I heard that over and over again. I don't hear that much anymore. I think graffiti has been accepted as an art form in most places. You know, street art is, is definitely supported. There's aspects of it which are still illegal and, and all that, but there's also people are perfectly happy to paint legitimate invited murals as well. There's a few diehards who really only want to do it if it's clandestine and under the ground because for the very good reason is that's the only time you're really free. You know that if you do it with somebody's permission, they can take it away. If you do it for money, they have a say in what you're going to do. The only true freedom is to usurp the space at night illegally and, and paint what you want. There are a number of artists, fine artists, that, um, like Cy Twombly, 
where his work resembles to some degree, and I think he was influenced by graffiti. There was an exhibit a number of years ago at the, at the MoMA in New York entitled High Low, and that was its thesis, that, that uh, there were ways in which high art was influenced by low art. And it wasn't just graffiti, it was all kinds of art, yeah, art, art by children and mad people and underground comics, Un, untutored, uh, non-academic art in general was was influencing certain artists who were in the, in the canon, the high art canon. The London Times declared in, I think, 1987 that Spray Can Art, which was my second book, was the second most stolen book in the world. Then they went on to say that the first one happened to be also by the same author, which was Subway Art. It is an honor. We didn't have to suggest it, like Abby Hoffman said, steal this book. You know, people just did it. Here we are now, 40 years later, it never crossed my mind. But that it got to be this big and this worldwide, never would have expected that to happen. And it's great. It's wonderful.